All right, guys, Jameson and Alex here, That's right. bringing you the next subclass from the Taldore campaign setting, which yes. came out a few years ago. Uh, we're just going through these. The second one on here that we're going to go through is the Path of the Juggernaut oh. Barbarian. So another Barbarian subclass on here. Uh, if you're new to the subclass series or to the channel, what we're going to do is we're going to go through all the abilities gained in this subclass. Then we're going to rate it based on its roleplay value, combat value, and overall class synergy based on how the abilities gained in this subclass improve on the base class abilities. So, uh, we also have a giveaway for Free the D&D &D Beyond Players Bundle, so make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to be entered for a chance to win that. More books. But we will jump straight into it so we can get started. Alex, what do we get? We get that? thunderous blows. Nice. Once per turn, while raging, when you damage a creature with a melee attack, you can force target to make a strength saving throw. DC of 8 plus your 50 plus your strength modifier. It better be your strength modifier. A <laughs> failure. You push the target 5 feet away from you. And you can choose, that's also important, to immediately move 5 feet into the target's previous position. So, knock something away from maybe a, your wizard friend who's getting beat up by something because it has no health. And then you can immediately step between you and them, you yeah. know? So, if it tries to run away from you after you smack on it, you get, you know, opportunity attack right away from them. Yeah, I think that's something to not overlook because you, you get to stay in their range as well. Mm -hmm. You get to move with them. You're not just kicking them away from you. Right. So, you can run away. You're Because you're, you're, you're a barbarian. You can run away from nothing. Yeah, no. You'll, you're dumb. You're a barbarian. He's <laughs> <laughs> like, I take with chest. You hate when things run away from you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it makes you rage harder. Uh, also, you have Stance of the Mountain. You can't be knocked prone while raging. Until you, know, you, right. you come unconscious. That's pretty much yeah. what it is. Imagine. I wish that unconscious part wasn't there. Just imagine like you're unconscious, but you're still standing. I, I would would a hundred percent allow my player if he's playing this to just be immune to prone, <laughs> even if he's unconscious. Just immune to prone all like his his, his legs and toes are just cramp locked into grabbing the ground. He's just sitting there. Like, is he okay? He's like, no, he's passed out. How is he standing there? Toast. Don't worry about it. <laughs> then at level six, we get demolishing might. Shaking the core of even the strongest creatures, you can muster destructive force. All of your melee attacks gain the siege property, which basically gives you melee attacks, double damage to objects and structures. Also, your melee attacks against creatures of the construct type Deal an additional 1d8 weapon damage. So, robot creatures, flesh golems, yep. all those. Transformers kinds of, don't stand a chance. Yeah. <laughs> they will get destroyed by your demolishing might. That's right. Then at level 10, we have Overwhelming Cleave. Upon reaching 10th level, you wade into armies of foes, great swings of your weapon striking many who threaten you. Sounds better than it is. Yes. <laughs> because essentially, when you make weapon attack, while raging, again, pretty much everything I mean, in this subclass is about raging. You are a barbarian, so it's what you do. Uh, you can make another attack as a bonus action, but it has to be with the same weapon against a different creature that is within five feet of the original target and within range of your weapon. Mm -hmm. So lots of asterisks on actually being able to use that. It's probably very rarely ever going to trigger, because how often are you standing next to a creature that also has another creature next to it that you are also in range of? Only when you're fighting probably in like a confined space, like in a room. Right. It's probably the only time it's going to come up. But, to be fair, I didn't really think too much about this beforehand. You could push somebody into a... Hey, hey, I, 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 I could, I could push you. people closer to each other. Like they're, they're, set up. they're like five, five feet apart. It's like, to get be, over there. It has to be pretty relatively close yeah. to each other. So, pretty much. Let me keep in mind. And then lastly, we have Unstoppable at level 14. Ah. You become unstoppable when you rage. Man, yes, what is this? If you do so, for the duration of your rage, your speed cannot be reduced, and you are immune to frightened, paralyzed, and stunned conditions. If you are frightened, paralyzed, or stunned, you can still take your bonus action to enter your rage and suspend effects for the duration of the rage. When the rage ends, you suffer one level of exhaustion. So, that's that. You're much harder to stop. You're yes. unstoppable. Wow. Oh. So, those are all the abilities gained in the subclass. So now we'll move on into the rating portion of the video. First up is the roleplay value. Asterisk, Asterisk as, as always. always. Talking about roleplay value, we're talking about interacting with the world around you, interacting with NPCs, non-combat scenarios, avoiding combat, basically things outside of the initiative order. Not talking about your class fantasy, history, lore, background, that's on you as a player. We can't rate you, but we can rate the abilities gained in this subclass and how they might improve your potential in those roleplay scenarios. So. 
All that being said, looking at all these things on here, there's not a whole lot in the role play department. The only uh -uh. things that you're really dealing with on here is demolishing might, getting siege damage to structures. Just mashing and, buildings. You know, there's mashing. no door. You don't care. You just go through the wall. You make door. So that can definitely you come are, You are not hold, hold door. You are make door. <laughs> hey, that's that's good. I don't care who you are. Yeah. Let's <laughs> brush by that real quick. <laughs> that being said, um, other than that, everything else really is going to rely on you raging. Yes. Which you're going to want to rage in combat. So most of the time, getting your bonuses to strength. Because if you rage out of combat, it's only going to last for six seconds. You better make it really impactful when you and rage out of combat. It depends on what level you are as well. But yeah, you can, yeah. So. You can be mad all the time eventually. Yeah, right. So it's a little bit on the niche side for the RP. So we just went with a one and a half. It's very simple. Not a whole lot going on here. Mm. Just the siege and maybe some niche uses with some of the other abilities. Yep. Uh, on the combat side of things. Uh, again, normally if one thing is lacking on one, it's better on the other. And it's definitely... Better? <laughs> it is better. It's better. It's, 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 Mathematically, it's better. It's better. <laughs> Mathematically, it's better. Um, I've, I'm personally never a huge fan of the whole pushing mechanic most of the time because what's it really doing for you as a melee person pushing you, you know something away from you? This does let you chase immediately chase that five foot gap, so that right. helps. Uh, but again, I don't know all that impactful for pushing stuff. I, I just don't think it does much for you. No. Uh, the better part of that early thing is definitely being immune to knock prone because one thing a barbarian's health pool doesn't like is when he's on his back everything has advantage against him the only time you want that to happen is when you've chosen to let it happen reckless, when you get yeah. reckless attack right. uh, but when you don't get the benefit of it and you're getting the wrong end of that it's not a fun time your hit point, your hit points will not matter when, when you're getting advantage to attack against all the time right. that's great so I get, get around that uh, demolishing might knocking down structures K fine sure um not going to be super impactful in combat unless you get your DM lets you get really clever with like knocking like buildings down onto people there in combat. Maybe you're like you're saying, okay, I saw one just off the top of my head. You're in a like the second floor of something and you break the floor underneath them and they fall through the floor or something. Yeah. I mean, you could do some weird stuff. I mean, but yeah. depends on how you know. Again, depends on the situ that's niche on situation and the other damage point on damage bonus uh, to constructs. You don't find any constructs, that's not going to matter. Yeah, right. Um, just depend campaign depend. Uh, Overlimbing cleave, cool when you get to do it, but as we talked about earlier, it's going to be very, be. very, <laughs> very, <laughs> very, 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 unlikely <laughs> that that's going to get to happen because it just doesn't happen. Unless you're in fighting an enclosed space, it's just not going to happen more than once every 15 sessions. Random number, it's not going to happen. Uh, and finally, unstoppable. Um, again, a lot of the stuff you get in the subclass is going to be niche use uh, when, it, when it's impactful. But being able to get around fright and paralyze and stun conditions as an immunity, not advantage on saving throws against, that can be really huge when it happens because a lot of stuff at higher level has ability to apply one, if not multiple, of those conditions on you. And when you're a melee character, that fright might matters a whole lot more than right. when you're a ranged character. Because if you can't get closer to them, you can't smack them with a melee weapon. Right. <laughs> and that sucks. Uh, and nothing is, as a player in general, nothing is worse than having to spend your turn doing nothing because you're paralyzed or stunned. Right. So you literally can't do a dang thing. So, but if you're not fighting anything that can use those conditions, yeah. your capstone literally isn't doing anything for you. So right. it's super impactful when it applies. When right. it doesn't apply, it does nothing. Yes. Uh, so that's. The, that's kind of the whole story, I think, of this <laughs> class in general. Is it <laughs> when much. it's impact when it when it happens, it's cool. When but that's it, it doesn't always happen. You could there right. three quarters of stuff you may not see for multiple sessions. Yeah, which is why it's true. gonna if nothing. If nothing's gonna knock you prone anyway. It doesn't matter. Yep. If nothing is within five feet of something else that you're hitting, it does, your level ten ability doesn't matter. Yep. If you don't have anything that's going to frighten, paralyze, or stun you, your capstone is. Yeah, so three so just, three of your five abilities may not get are not going to get used consistently. And then siege damage, I mean, that's probably not going to come up that often. And if you're not fighting constructs, that's not coming up. And that leaves you with one ability, which is you can push something. A chance, sorry, a chance to push something has to make a strength save. It could, and, it could and, succeed. And the higher you up you get, the more everything has good strength saves. Beefy things for sure. Yeah. So two and a half. A lot of talking for a two and a half, <laughs> but again, it's a lot of niche stuff that can be good, but the when everything is niche, it's hard right. to give it a much higher score than yeah. that. That's that's really the issue there is that it's so like the capstone when it works is great. Is ma is huge. Super to not impactful. Get just Im immune to being stunned or paralyzed is is huge. But how often is that going to come up? Depends on your campaign. Yeah, it really does. 
<laughs> we say that a lot. We know, but there's it's, some things it's that like if if there's a capstone that is heavily reliant one specific scenario, like that's another thing why we don't like the abilities that you have to go to zero hit points to trigger. Your objective is to never get to zero hit points. Period. It you will, will. It will happen. It will happen. But your but your you, whole point is to minimize that. Exactly. <laughs> so it's just when you have a very specific abilities that are contingent on very specific scenarios. Yep. It's hard like, to give like too bad much things value. happening to you essentially. Right. right. <laughs> being being CC'd or being dead. <laughs> yes. uh, all that being said, onto the last section, which yes. is the overall class mm-hmm. synergy with barbarians. I mean, your biggest thing is obviously going to be your rage. Right. You also have like your reckless attack. Yes. Uh, and then there's things like danger sense and armor movement that can come into play. Mm. Most of those things that come with the base barbarian class are helping you get to something to beat it up. Mm-hmm. So not getting knocked prone can help you get to something. Yes. Not being able to have your movement speed reduced can help you get to something. Yes. Uh, being able to push things away or towards other things, or hit multiple things, oh, all no of chance. these things while raging, yes. gives you some interesting uses on there. So we went with a three and a half on yes. the synergy side, as mm-hmm. there are some nice uses for some synergy for the base class. Yep. But again, some niche use on here. If things aren't reducing your speed, if things aren't knocking you prone, you have two abilities that just do nothing. The, so. the, the analogy I like to go to when I'm kind of rating, explaining, analyzing a lot of different subclasses, and even base classes for that matter, is... How does it affect the floor and the ceiling right. potential of of uh, whatever we're talking about? In this case, this subclass. I think this helps the floor of the barbarian because it helps you get to stuff. You know, you're not getting knocked on your butt. You know, some weaknesses that barbarians have. It does kind of help get around those. Yeah. The, the, the CC if that does happen, but it's not not letting you do anything significantly more right. than the base barbarian does. It lets you do what the base barbarian already does a little bit more consistently. Right. That's how to smash buildings. Yes. So, guys, (laughs) that will wrap it up for this one. Uh, We got one more left in this book. uh, As we already did the Cobalt Soul Monk, Monk, which was updated on D&D Beyond recently. So we did the more updated version of that. But it was originally in this book. Yep. So we will be doing the Rune Child next. So make sure you check back to the channel for that. So that's all for today, guys. If you enjoyed the video, please remember to like, subscribe, hit the bell notification so you know when all of our new videos are coming out. And as always, thanks for watching.